know, I think the best part about it is that, you know, not only the staff, the other filmmakers, but all the people who attend the festival have, I think, a really strong appreciation for documentary. Getting to see the filmmakers and hear from the directors is really great. It um, adds a lot to the experience. The single greatest common denominator for being in prison in this country is not color, it's not economic background, it's not if you come from a, uh, an abusive family environment, it's whether or not you can read. I want to shed my skin so that I could become a man, but this cocoon doesn't have any exit signs. This class is called power writing. The most simple and basic way you empower yourselves is through self-awareness. I think power writing is a, an environment where the teachers give back some of the power that they've brought into that room to the, to the young people. This film is not about um, the adults figuring it out for the kids. It's about the kids figuring it out for themselves. When I was younger, I sort of saw my life's work as finding voice for the voiceless. It's a thrill and an honor and a pleasure to be here. This is one of the best festivals I've ever been to in my life, and it's truly a festival that honors documentary. Well, it's also a, a, a filmmaker's conference, so it's not just about showing the films, it's also about the process of making the films, how people help each other. This is a great place to build that spirit of collaboration. The film is called Diary, and it's by a British war cinematographer named Tim Hetherington, who lost his life in Libya and just a few months ago while covering the war in Libya, the civil war in Libya. And the film, Diary, is about a 20-minute documentary which he was putting together. It's like a testimonial. It's a very powerful reflection of what it is to be a war correspondent, which he, is de he had devoted most of his life to. And like the adrenaline rush that you get from see seeing all these stories, the suffering, put you in a, some sort of a dream-like uh, state is where, you know, what really matters is the story and nothing else matters. He does an amazing job of conveying this feeling of chaos and complexity that is the situation of, of wars and violence. The Loving Story is a story of an interracial couple who married in the late 50s in Virginia uh, and promptly got thrown into jail for the crime of falling in love and marrying as a mixed race couple. We were married on the second day of June and the police came after us the 14th of July. We were married a month and a few days. The case is now before a federal court in Richmond. And whatever the decision, the Loving case is likely to wind up here at the United States Supreme Court. And ultimately, Loving v. Virginia overturned all the anti-miscegenation statutes in the country. It was a reminder to me that anybody really can change history. Anybody can make a difference. The footage was able to really speak for itself, and that was one of our guiding principles when we were cutting the film. I think the decision to use the Verite footage as a storytelling device and not come on with a voice of God narrator, which is what you typically see in historical documentaries, gave it a contemporary feel. We let it breathe. We let long scenes develop. We, we actually created almost a narrative feeling so that you felt like you were looking at a story from beginning to end. I've only been here for a day, but already I feel a fabulous community surrounding these films, um, an enthusiasm and an energy in the audiences and among the filmmakers, and I just wish I were going to be here longer. It's just been a great experience for us to get out there and. Um have a good time seeing other people's films, meeting other filmmakers, making great industry connections, learning about how other people are successfully distributing, marketing, and producing. Um, you know, and then open bar every night of the week is a great way to top off a day.